I'm going to do my very best to to share with you some thoughts and help provide some perspective for the conversation today and the work that you all are doing to protect such an extraordinary set of destinations in the Cape and the islands. As I mentioned, and I should say on the onset, excuse me, Julie may have mentioned this earlier, I don't know, but Crest is very proud of almost a 10-year partnership with Care for the Cape and Islands since the very beginning. And so we have worked side-by-side with Jill and the team. So it's been very exciting for us. And I will get up to the Cape and we'll be able to follow up. Before I start my slides and share with you, I wanted to explain a bit, and I think it's relevant, to the importance of authentic experiences for destination and the whole concept of that as it relates to destination stewardship. And that's how I got connected to Cape Cod and the islands. I was a naturalist in the Galapagos National Park in the late 70s, a long time ago. And then I did my graduate work. I got my doctorate at the University of Connecticut in ecology. And because I had come across, you know, of course, Galapagos tortoises, the history of the whaling industry and the impact of the whaling industry was very huge in the Galapagos. And a significant number of those ships had come from Nantucket. So what I did is my first time is I went out to Nantucket and went to the whaling museum there. So that's, long story short, that's what began my journey over the past 40 years of enjoying and experiencing the tremendous natural, cultural, and historical resources of Cape Cod. Without question, that's fundamental to everyone. Second point I just want to raise when I'm going to set the tone and sort of a framework for thinking about destination stewardship. But when we get to our success panel and then get to my good friend Julie Regan from Lake Tahoe, think about those as specific examples and how they become very important pieces in a puzzle. And then finally, everything I'm going to talk about is going to be destination stewardship in the context of a responsible recovery. We have been in a global travesty of the pandemic. We are not out of it economically, socially, et cetera. We've suffered mightily. And so we want to be thinking about as we move forward in Cape and the islands and elsewhere of how important it is to do things differently, to do things better. And I know you all are working hard on that. So with that, I am going to share my screen. Wonderful. Well, again, this is very exciting. The Take Care Cape and the Islands is a great movement. Julie Regan is going to talk more about how maybe you can continue to collaborate with the Lake Tahoe, Take Care Tahoe. But I want to talk about the unique opportunities that Cape and the Islands presents for all of us to really develop a new model for destination stewardship. Let me just tell you quickly who we are and what I oversee. I'm the executive director of the Center for Responsible Travel. We were formed in 2003. We're a global organization, nonprofit, based in D.C., and we're all about increasing the positive global impact of responsible tourism. We are not a promoter of tourism activities per se. We are a promoter and advocate for responsible travel and tourism solutions. And I think that's very important. We're also the co-founder of the Future of Tourism Coalition. And I'm going to use a bit of information from that in just a moment. CREST is very much an evidence-based and research where we use our research and analysis to influence and direct governments, policymakers, tourism businesses, folks like yourself, and international agencies to solve the most pressing problems. Our focus at CREST, we've defined in this past year where we're really going to be much more of a 
uh, focused organization and we're focusing around obviously very large threats, but uh, to a sustainable future. And these are responding to the climate crisis as it relates to sustainable tourism, conserving biodiversity and cultural heritage, addressing over tourism and narrowing the wealth gap within uh, destination. It's interesting that every one of those in, is relevant to Cape Cod and the islands. And I think you'll see this in a moment. So with the pandemic, we, we saw a virtual shutdown of travel. Uh, everyone's starting to get back, uh, except me, <laughs> on the road. Um, you know, you know, should we just stop traveling? I mean, that is a question that people are asking. Should, should we just, you know, maybe it was better. Maybe destinations shouldn't be inundated with tourists and what have you. But it's not a, it's, that's not the right question. And it's not a simple, simple question anyway. Um, the fact of the matter is tourism globally accounts for nearly 10% of all global gro gross domestic product. And one in 10 jobs, and almost 60% of those are with women, are in the travel, tourism, hospitality arena. It's huge, the biggest employer. Uh, tourism is also part of what I'm a real champion of, and that's the experience-based economy. Economies that are built on authentic, hopefully, authentic, natural, cultural, and even spiritual um, uh, experiences, rather than an extraction-based economy. And this is... This, this is really important, and I think this is really critical because without question, the Cape and the Island is built around experience, built around the tremendous experiences that people have with their families and friends, et cetera. But tourism also plays a tremendously important role in, in the economy globally, and we saw that without question. Uh, we're continuing to see that in more than 125 countries. Uh, tourism plays a major role. And in the developing world, in their economy, in the developing world, 83% um, of all developing nations depend on tourism more than any other industry for hard currency, dollars, um, uh, euros, et cetera. That's huge. It may not impact uh, Cape Cod per se, but it impacts the global economy. And then finally, um, sustainable tourism can be a very effective instrument for human development, you know, poverty alleviation, uh, employment, et cetera. So I mentioned before that we're a co-founder of the um, Future of Tourism Coalition, and I'm happy to report uh, that we're, we're thriving pretty well. It's the organizations are listed there. I won't list them all. But what's exciting is we created, um, we got together in early two, 2020 and really recognized that we have to do better. So we created 13 guiding principles of which some of those are there. If you want to go to them, just go futureoftourism.org and you'll find a, a wealth of information for you. Um, but what was important is that we created 13 uh, guiding principles for sustainable tourism, and then we rolled that out. And I'm happy to report that we had 22 original signatories, and you have one of the 22 speaking a little bit later, Julie Regan. She, was, she and her group were in the vanguard uh, with us on this, and, and I'm really happy and proud of that. But these kind of enduring strategic partnerships, partnerships of cooperation and impact and outcome are important. And I encourage all of you in the theater today and everyone in the, uh, throughout the uh, community of the Cape and Islands to be thinking about how, how you can collaborate, how you can bring more than the sum of the parts together to address the all important needs that you have to steward and protect the tremendous natural and cultural resources that you have in, uh, in the Cape and the Islands. Now, <clears throat> this is really fundamental and I, I would like everyone to just kind of take a moment and so, there's a lot of information up here, but what I want to underscore is the following. We are putting and believe we should put the destination and the communities within those destinations and destination is defined in various ways. It can, Nantucket can be a destination, obviously, um, Martha's Vineyard and the Cape, but the Cape and the island is a collective destination as well because oftentimes people go to more than one location. Um, the fact of the matter, our purpose is to push governments, planners, and companies to focus and put the destination in communities at the center of sustainable tourism. And that's fundamental. The second is we want to see that where we have functional and stable systems. And that's fundamental to the concept of sustainability. 
is the systems approach, whether it's natural systems like water and fresh air, et cetera, or economic or social systems where people are interacting as a community uh, and thriving. Third, and I'm sure this is top of mind in, in the Cape and the islands is resilience, resilience to changing climate, resilience to changing economics, et cetera. And then finally, ensuring that we're all using metrics that matter. It's not just the beds and boots that are coming, you know, moving in and out of the Cape and islands. It's all about quality of experience. So what we've done is we put the destination, the people, places, and nature at the center. And then the purpose of um, a real sustainable destination stewardship approach is to take, to bring together and unite public sector, private sector, and the non-governmental or non-profit side. And that's a broad array, it can go from faith-based organizations to conservation groups, to you name it. The common purpose and common drive for these organizations has and must be um, a common good, a common goal, and that's to create and sustain a great place to live and work. And if you have that, it is a great place to visit. And if you don't have a, it to be a great place to work and live, um, eventually a place isn't going to be a, a good visitor location. And that's something that certainly is top of mind in many, many cases in Cape and the Islands. So let me just talk about this destination stewardship. Just what are we looking at here? Um, this is something uh, that is really key. And so let me, let me unpack it a bit for you and for everyone. And destination stewardship is an approach that balances and meets the needs of a destination and its communities and operates with legitimacy and consent under a participatory governance model. Now there's a lot in that statement, that first statement, but think about some of those key things. The destination community operates with legitimacy, meaning the public recognize whatever, it's a, a destination stewardship council, which many places develop from public and private sector or others and has the consent of the public. This, de this uh, destination stewardship uh, requires a clear mandate good knowledge and data, yeah. and the identification of mutual interests and priorities, particularly between the public and private sector. I think everyone recognizes how siloed we all become in our own uh, busy world of whether we're public sector, private sector, uh, we're in the tourism ind industry, we're a tour operator, uh, we're a school, we're a church, you name it out on the Cape and Islands, uh, you know, we get kind of locked into our perspectives. But the fact of the matter is, by having those mutual interests and priorities, and this is something that's gonna be key for the Cape and Islands moving forward, is to get unity of purpose around destination stewardship, getting that, that all important uh, commonality with everyone. Whoops. Now, using destination stewardship, looking towards what I said at the onset, a responsible recovery. And I use that word very seriously, responsible, because that means it's very intentional. It's driven by uh, evidence, by science, and it's taking others' interests into account. Now, uh, destination stewardship and the steps to a responsible recovery, and, and these hold 100% for the Cape and Islands, no question, is the following. These are some steps I just wanted to, to uh, share with everyone now. First, and I've said this before, collaboration and partnership, not competition, is the way forward. It's very important. And I think uh, Jill and the team at Care for the Cape and Islands uh, is doing something that we need to scale up. The importance of bringing um, industry partners together that, well, you are maybe hotels that compete at, quote, against each other with each other for uh, uh, tourists for visitors the fact is it is far better to collaborate and partner than it is to just outright compete if you compete and you continue in this recovery uh, that that without collaborating that will be failure there's just I, I think that's really clear to us now as i mentioned before destination communities at the center intentionality to sustainability 
is going to be very important. I strongly encourage everyone to uh, rethink how they're approaching sustainability. There's a lot of good information um, free on our website at Crest, responsibletravel.org. Uh, you can find for um, operators, um, tourists, visitors, et cetera, very important. There's a few um, very important elements that hadn't pre-pandemic rise to the top as much as they have now, and they are really front and center. And this is certainly the case for the Cape and Islands, and that is to responsible recovery needs to have an explicit intentional um, attention to transportation and affordable housing. Um, that's something that, you know, you, you, that's just, you have to get your arms around that. In addition, under-resourced communities, and I, I use under-resourced communities uh, because oftentimes people may not be in a lower economic, or communities may not be in a lower economic status, but they are uninformed, un, under-resourced in the sense of understanding what's going on, and that's very important. If you take these initial steps, you put a deliberate attention to these points, this can lead to competitive advantage for you in a post-COVID tourism, whether you're on the Cape, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, or elsewhere. And that's my proposition or hypothesis in this, and it's, and it's borne out with uh, TEP. So during, this post, during and post-COVID, as, as the competitive landscape for tourism shifts, I hold no illusions, most all of you in the room today are likely business people or you're running a business of some form, whether it's uh, Brian, the superintendent of, uh, of the, 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 the uh, seashore, or people who run hotels or businesses. The fact is, it's essential for you to, in, in, in maintaining your position in a competitive landscape to do the following. One is, and this has really been my mantra for a very long time, is we must take a holistic approach to sustainability that includes and incorporates like a three-legged stool, the natural, cultural, and spiritual elements of place. Doesn't mean you have all three of those in the same level, but what happens with a stool if you pull one of those out, you can't sit on it. And so the natural, cultural, spiritual elements, these need to be taken into account. And they need to be very intentional in our desire to be good stewards of the destination. Second, and you all know this is that, um, those who have who invest in preparation and effective risk management are going to be competitive into the future. And obviously, the impacts of um, climate change are front and center for all of you on the Cape and the islands, no question. But also uh, um, other impacts, uh, you know, with sea level rise and changing weather patterns, but also just the overall economics of, of COVID, et cetera, that we don't know what the future is going to look like. As a result, it's str strongly encouraged all of you to, uh, everyone to start being very uh, intentional about thinking about how you can better adapt and be resilient to change. This is very important. And then finally, um, it's essential that we all focus on uh, to be good destination stewards locally as well as globally to decarbonize. This is frankly fundamental to future competitiveness and re relevance. All the surveys that have been done by major uh, uh, travel uh, aggregators has found between 85 and 90 percent of people say that they want to see a more sustainable approach to the hotels, the tour operators, et cetera, that they use. They want to see this incorporated, and, and that's going to influence their decisions. And this is more than just uh, stopping the use of uh, single-use plastics, which is very important. It's about giving back to the community, being a partner to the community and contributing and, allow, and having uh, tourists have the opportunity like you're doing now in the Cape and in the islands uh, with Care for the Cape and Islands and, and, and others as well. This is critical. <laughs> Just some quick uh, things to think about um, in terms of uh, you know, how you can approach this and how we can approach this to really find the kind of destination stewardship models that can and should work for uh, the Cape and Islands now. Uh, first, we want, and I put this first, is we want to and need to um, determine how best to sustain local economy and ecosystem health. And I think that's something that's really key. 
Uh, second is to promote social equity, both the access and distribution of benefits. I know this is, a, is an issue. Um, you've got what, 4 million um, visitors coming into the seashore, um, people coming in, coming back out, and do, does everyone have the same benefits and access? Um, on the Cape and islands, I think one element that is really, I think, of great and high potential and needs to be taken to scale is to strengthen stewardship values. Stewardship values among residents and visitors. And I think this is kind of the crux of the point I rep I made a few minutes ago, and that's being under-resourced as a community. Are residents aware of what is it's changing on the Cape and the Island? Are residents aware of um, how they should be communicating or business owners communicating with visitors? And on the same time, then if Cape and the Islands operators and business people are conveying a message of destination stewardship, and this is what we care about, that will then convey to the visitor. And that's really key. Another element, and I believe the Cape and Islands are doing this pretty well, is to increase the diversity of activities, experiences, and settings while protecting natural and cultural resources. I know it's easier said than done in a unique geography like the Cape and Islands, where in essence, you have three islands. Um, the only difference is the Cape has a, a, a connection by roads um, where Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard do not. But the fact is you all function uh, very much like an island, all, all like islands. And, and as a result, that's really, um, it's really hard to spread people out. You know, you've got people aggregating in a lot of places, but this can be done with a diversity of activities where, um, you know, your marketing and, and destination management can focus much more on the shoulder season, provide opportunities. And I know there are cases that exist uh, in lots of festivals and things, but this is very important for a good destination stewardship plan for, for the Cape and Islands to be looking <coughs> at this uh, as an opportunity. And then finally, um, in terms of maintaining a competitive advantage through uh, destination stewardship, I think this is, this is a really interesting one that I think doesn't get uh, necessarily the kind of attention uh, in many, many places. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm trying to do is share the perspective that we have at Crest as a global organization, but we work locally in a number of places. And that's the follow-up. It's really to maintain a competitive advantage in this post-COVID environment, to really be a genuine steward of your destination, target and focus on improving your ability to respond and predict how visitors evaluate, envision, and attach meaning to destinations. This, I think, without question, Many, many people who come to the Cape and Islands have, as you all well know, have deep connections, whether it's family connections, they've gone vacations there since they were kids um, and they continue. But the world is changing quite a bit and the, the demographics of the, of the world are changing. And, and I say the world, your world, uh, the visitors to uh, the Cape and Islands. And it's gonna be important to really understand how, they, how the visitors of today and tomorrow put meaning and can, can strike and, and derive meaning from the um, tremendous offering of experiences that the Cape and Islands provide visitors. You'll have to adapt. You'll have to adjust the messaging, the, the activities that are provided. That, and, and really, I think there's a tremendous opportunities to further promote and protect the natural and cultural resources. So, Let's, let's take a look now, and this is uh, um, gonna be key here, is using destination stewardship, we wanna then sort of, this is the desired state. You wanna maximize your sustainable economic development for communities, minimize visitor impacts on natural and cultural assets, rebalance priorities, and it's what I like to call it, avoid the desperate desperate measures to make a buck by any means by lowering environmental and societal best practices. This is something that we've seen in many places with, a, with an early COVID recovery. 
is that uh, there actually has been uh, a regression of some uh, uh, good practices in, in many places where they have just opened the floodgates to tourists. And I we understand the motives there because economically people were very, very uh, uh, impacted by uh, um, the pandemic, no question. And then finally, um, and I know that Cape and the Islands does this with, with really good success, is uh, to embrace the domestic responsible travel and recreation business and the visitor. This is something that I think um, Cape and the Islands is, is so well positioned, already doing this, just need to stay the course, the, the offerings there. And I, I think for uh, uh, domestic tourists, it's really key. And you're probably going to see more and more as a result because the Cape and Islands offers opportunities that where, frankly, if people thinking about going to Europe or, or other places or Mediterranean or whatever, you know, the Cape and Islands is a very suitable alternative for people and it's in the USA. And so you're gonna be a marketplace that's gonna be even more um, desirable. So you're gonna to need to embrace that, of course, but also manage it. Now, we wanna model responsible travel behavior, looking at quality over quantity and value over volume. We wanna make sure that travelers can act responsibly with a clear path to responsible choices. And really, as I like to say, normalize sustainability. It's just the way people do business in, um, in the Cayman Islands. And when you go there, that's with how you behave as a tourist, as a resident, second homeowner, et cetera. And part of that is gonna be closing the gap between the casual traveler and the more aware or informed travelers. There's various decision filters and thresholds that differ between those populations. And those are something that I'm, I'm, I'm confident that are, are being addressed uh, across the Cape and Islands. Uh, one other area that I think is, is really reflects untapped potential for the Cape and Islands is to tell even better stories. Embrace, truly embrace the sense of place. And that is just so important where humanity as a shared condition is, is front and center and that use, use tangible accessible language to emphasize specific experiences and connections. Now these, these points may not seem like they're necessarily part of destination stewardship, but stewardship is only possible if you have that public private visitor residence partnership where everyone feels the shared responsibility of being a steward of the Cape and Islands. And that's something that everyone, uh, a piece of trash that's thrown down, that you're, hey, this is, this is my house. And whether you're a visitor or a resident. So let's just um, um, finish up here. And to have a model for destination stewardship that truly embraces and manages sustainable tourism and recreation, these are really the key elements I, I just want to leave you with. You need to have, it's essential to have genuine industry and government leadership that is change driven. Second is bold and long term planning. I think this is something that merits a lot more attention probably in most uh, destinations. The third is to be looking at quality of visitation, not quantity of visitors. And that has a number of uh, important factors. Obviously, visitation is very different when it comes to a car-based populace so much on the Cape where it's much harder, obviously, to drive and then get on the ferry to Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket. Measures that matter is something that is, is of paramount importance because too often the tourism industry has just strictly been looking at um, old metrics, metrics of number of visitors, more money is better, et cetera. And this is, uh, this is something that really um, has to be changed. And you all need to demand that change and be change agents for that, I think without question. And then finally, and this is something that I can't emphasize enough, you need to act now. You need to make a commitment to make this day the first day of, your, uh, of a more enhanced journey uh, for destination stewardship to save both 
your economy and this tremendous place that is the Cape and the islands. So with that, let me uh, finish up before I completely lose my voice. Um, I know I won't probably be able to interact with anyone, but uh, I hope that was helpful. And uh, please give full attention to our success panel and then to uh, Julie Regan from uh, uh, Lake Tahoe. I think these will provide some tremendous examples of, of what I've talked about more at a um, 20,000 foot level. So thank you. And I'm, I'm really saddened that I am not there with you. <laughs> thank you, Jeff.